Does Jesus Matter to Our Freedom? Part 2. Natural Law Western societies today have little or no awareness that the rights and liberties that we take for granted are largely the result of Christ's influence. When King John of England signed the Magna Carta in 1215, the era of the king being above the law came to an end. The Magna Carta had important Christian ties that sought to honor God and reform the nation. So what made this charter so important? Here are four reasons. First, justice could no longer be sold or denied to freemen who were under the authority of a baron. Second, there could be no more taxation without representation. Third, no one could be imprisoned without a trial. And fourth, property could not be taken from an owner without just compensation. The Magna Carta brought us closer to seeing natural law as the basis of all government. But what do we mean by natural law? Well, natural law is the remarkable ability all humans have to know what is right and wrong. It's inside of us. We all have it, despite where we live in the world. It's as wrong to kill a person in India as it is in Italy or in the United States. Wherever we are, we can count on our conscience to let us know when we have violated this internal natural law. It's part of God's created order and is eternal and unchanging. It's the foundation for all human laws. In essence, the natural law contains God's Ten Commandments. Although the natural laws are not communicated in a visual or audible manner, they tell the natural human being what is right and what is wrong. The Apostle Paul observed that many of the Gentiles, or non-Jews, who didn't have the law of Moses to follow, actually conducted themselves in accordance with that law. Here is what Paul wrote. Their conduct, namely that of the Gentiles, shows that what the law commands is written on their hearts. Their consciences also show that this is true, since their thoughts sometimes accuse them and sometimes defend them. John Locke was an English philosopher and Christian. He agreed with the Apostle Paul's understanding of the natural law. Locke maintained that government existed to uphold the natural law. He argued that any governmental tyranny violated the natural law because it was not given to the people by kings or governments, but by nature, and therefore by God. American patriots used John Locke's concepts of the natural law to argue for the rights of its citizens in the American colonies. In writing the Declaration of Independence, they wrote about these truths as being self-evident. The American Constitution was largely the result of James Madison, who reflected Christian influence in his thinking and writing. The reason he argued for the separation of powers between church and state was because of the fallen nature of man. Madison wrote this, The truth is that all men, having power, ought to be distrusted to a certain degree. If men were angels, no government would be necessary. As a result, Americans have three branches of government which keep a critical eye on one another so that they maintain honesty and integrity. But what about rights that belong to us as individuals? We'll look at this in the next video.